In this episode, we're going to talk about rehab programs for tendinopathy. In this video, we're going to go over the basics for rehabbing a tendinopathy. Uh, tendinopathy is a term used to describe any pain related to a tendon. So the three most common tendinopathies are a rotator cuff tendinopathy with the most common being the supraspinatus, which is the top rotator cuff muscle. We also have the patellar tendon, which attaches the quads down to the lower leg, and then the Achilles tendon, which is on the back side of the heel, and that just attaches the calf muscles down to the foot. The goal for rehabbing a tendinopathy is to increase the load that it can tolerate. So when we think about why tendinopathies develop, they're typically overload conditions, meaning that we put too much load on the tendon and it wasn't able to adapt to that load. If we look at big picture, there's two ways that we can minimize overloading of the tendon. So on one hand, we can increase the load capacity of the tendon, so building a stronger tendon so that it can tolerate whatever load we're putting on it or we can just reduce the load on the tendon. So, but when we're looking at overall picture, if we just reduce the load, it'll never be able to accommodate whatever load we're putting on it. So that's part of the reason why rest isn't necessarily the best strategy for treating a tendinopathy. The rehab progression for tendinopathies basically follows three steps. So we're gonna hold it, load it, and then move it. Hold it refers to an isometric contraction. What we'll end up doing is we'll put some load on the tendon, but we won't actually move the joint. And so if we're looking at like a supraspinatus tendinopathy, what we'll do is we'll perform a lateral raise and we'll hold this for somewhere between 30 to 60 seconds. And we'll repeat that for four to five repetitions. These isometric contractions have been shown to actually reduce the pain of a tendinopathy. And so we can use these early on in a program to help decrease the pain and start building some of the loading capacity of the tendon. When we do these isometric contractions, a higher load typically produces better effects. So generally we want to try to go somewhere between 50 to 70% of whatever our max contraction would be, which means that simply performing a isometric hold for the supraspinatus of just kind of holding our arm up generally isn't sufficient enough to activate that pain relieving effect. So we'll want to use a pretty heavy band or dumbbells or something like that to put some load on the shoulder so that we can start that process of recovery. Of course this is all within tolerance, so if it's a really irritated tendon, we might not be able to put that amount of load on it, but if we're able to, that's generally the path that we want to take. Once we're able to hold a muscle contraction and not irritate the tendon too much, then we can transition into loading the tendon. So we're actually going to strengthen the tendon through concentric and eccentric muscle contractions. A concentric muscle contraction refers to when we contract a muscle against resistance and the muscle belly actually shortens. Whereas a eccentric muscle contraction, also called a negative, is where the muscle fibers will actually lengthen against resistance. So for a biceps contraction, this would be a concentric contraction, and then this would be the eccentric contraction. If we look at previous exercise programs for treating tendinopathies, they used to just focus on the eccentric component of exercise, but research has kind of shown that there's actually not much benefit to just isolating the eccentric component, and that actually kind of simplifies the whole process, because now we can just work on simply just strengthening it through the concentric and eccentric components, and not just isolating one part. When we start loading a tendinopathy, we want to start with slow muscle contractions and gradually increase the speed. So if we're looking at the Achilles tendon, for example, when we perform our heel lifts, we can do them to a two count up and a two count down. So as we lift the heel up, we'll go one, two, reach the top, and then one, two, as we slowly lower it down. The general recommendation is somewhere between six to 10 reps, and then we'll do it for three to four sets and that will all kind of depend on your tolerance. So if the tendon's still a little bit irritated, we might have to reduce the amount of load that we're putting on the tendon, but we're just gradually increasing both the volume on the tendon and then also the speed throughout this whole process. Once we've built enough strength in the tendon through the loaded stage, now we can progress to the move it stage, which refers to basically sport-specific movements or plyometric movements. 
In this stage, this is where we'll start adding in running, jumping, or throwing, all those kind of things that put a quick load on the tendon as we've built a sufficient base in the loaded stage for the tendon. Of course, we're gonna follow a smart progression whenever we're starting quicker movements on the tendon. So we don't wanna just go out if we're a baseball player and throw 100 pitches and then kind of see where the tendon is. We wanna just slowly incorporate some of these sport specific movements. So now we can just start throwing a couple times, whether it's a little bit lighter on the throws and gradually increase the volume and the intensity of the movement. Same thing would apply for a runner who's returning from like an Achilles tendinopathy, let's say. We wouldn't want to just start by running a marathon or doing some hill sprints. We'll want to gradually progress them so that the load on the tendon isn't increased by too much. So maybe we'll start with a 15 minute run followed by a 30 minute run and then progress until we get to wherever we need to go. In this stage, we need to make sure that the tendon has an adequate amount of time between each exercise session to adapt to the load that's being placed on it. So generally, we need about 48 to 72 hours in between each session to allow the tendon collagen to turn over. This will make sure that the tendon is ready for the next exercise session versus slowly kind of overloading the tendon each time, especially when we're so close to returning back to sport. So to recap, the rehab program for a tendinopathy should focus on building the load capacity of the tendon. And this generally occurs in three different stages. We have the hold it phase, which is the isometric muscle contraction phase. We have the load it stage, which is where we'll start strengthening the tendon through concentric and eccentric muscle contractions. And then finally the move it stage, which is where we'll start to incorporate sport specific and plyometric exercises.